Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the feature race at Saratoga on Friday. It's race number nine, and here they are. The Union Avenue Stakes was rescheduled from last week. We're going three quarters of a mile on the dirt. These are New York bred fillies and mares. Seven enter Lilu, six to five morning line favorite. She has been very consistent throughout her career. Yeah, she's had a, a pretty strong career, and it feels like she's gotten even better this year as a five-year-old dad. I mean, she her, her form is really strong leading into this. She got a perfect post on the outside, um, and I do think she's she's the clear horse to beat here. And she has really good tactical speed. Curious to see where our friends at Time Form US have her on the pace projector after the opening quarter mile, and they have her relatively close while in the clear. Majestic Return, the six, does have a lot of early speed. Uh, she can make the front with a little bit of a send. Kara's time has also shown some speed. And Cousin Christie up from Gulfstream Park can be close. I wonder if Cousin Christie, if she's aggressively ridden under Louis Sayas, can push this pace. I thought this pace had a chance to get pretty fast, Dan. I mean, all three of those horses that you just mentioned um, could just come out of their running and, and be looking for the lead in this race and that could really set this thing up maybe for somebody else it's certainly i don't think it's gonna i don't think it would hurt lilu if this pace got fast because she's very tactical if the pace does get strong and the pace setters get tired you might want to keep an eye on the four tricky temper note the lp flag she has the fastest time form us late pace rating we'll start things off with the number one kara's time third start off a little bit of a layoff for trainer mitch friedman let's watch her most recent start this is an open allowance race going three quarters of a mile at saratoga and she's right in the thick of things turning for home mike and she stays on pretty well to be third this is a good performance. It's a really strong open allowance race, and uh, she's no match for the one-two finishers, but they're both pretty good. And um, I thought she did well to be third in here, Dan. She She's a tough call for me in here because I do think she's a really talented horse, and she's got dangerous speed from the rail. Um, they went – they she started out with a lot of potential. Those last two races there at the, to start this year, January and February, she was bad in those two stakes races, and they regrouped, and she's come back really good from the layoff. But those two races with Lasix on, and the Lasix has to come off again in here. I think that's something that you really have to pay attention to with a horse like her. Security code is the number two. This horse was looking good in the beginning of 2024, reeling off a couple of wins, including a game score on the Broadway where she grinded it out over a wet track. They tried them one turn mile in the Biagio's Rose, and she was really keyed up in the early portion of that race before tiring. And then off a little bit of a layoff last time out, the Dance and Renee. She ran okay, I guess, considering the layoff, Mike. She never really threatened, but I think it's a good building block performance. Yeah, it's, it could be a race that she does needed. She's she's really consistent, Dan, and she, she, she'll she always just show up and sort of run her race. I do feel like she's a little bit opportunistic at times. Um, some of those races that she won, especially the Broadway when she won that race in February, I just feel like she sort of took advantage a little bit there. But she runs her race every single time, and there's certainly a chance that this race sets up pretty well for her with some, with some uh, other speed in the race. Captain's daughter also exits the dancing Renee behind Lilu in that race. And it was her first start off a long layoff. That's excuse number one. Excuse number two was she broke through the gate and that might have sapped some of her energy. But that being said, she was also 34 to one in that spot. So likely we'll have to improve against Lilu again. Yeah, exactly. Um, she, she's probably going to be a bigger price in here again. The good news, if you like her in here, Dan, and I do think she's mildly interesting. She's got races that will give her a chance in here. And she's almost always a big price when they run her in New York. So I don't think you need to worry about any of that stuff. She'll be a price in here. She's very versatile as far as running style goes. If this pace is fast, she's going to sit. She's going to make one run. And she could pre get a piece of this at the end at a big price. I liked some of the things Tricky Temper the Four did last year at two, including her victory in the key sense, where she was able to stay right up close to the pace and then be a game winner. Uh, and she's now making her fourth start of the year, and her last race might indicate a return to form. Let's watch this optional claimer at Saratoga going three quarters of a mile. The pace wasn't necessarily fast, and she was right up close to it, but once she takes the lead, the outcome's never really in doubt. Yeah, I agree. I thought she ran really well in here. It was a good spot. She was also in that open allowance race uh, with Kara's time, two starts back. That was too tough for her. This race was not. I thought she moved forward in here. It's a really good performance. She has speed, but she doesn't need the lead. I think she could take another step forward in this race, Dan. Cousin Christie, the number five, raced twice against New York Breds last year uh, to no avail, but maybe she's in better form now, returning from Gulfstream Park for Phil Serpy. Let's watch her last race. This is an open stake at Gulfstream. The musical romance going six and a half furlongs. She's up and on the pace. She's down on the inside, and she's just going to get a little bit tired late. She cuts back to six here. 
seems like a, a an improved horse this year for sure. I didn't love this performance, Dan. She's just no match for for Bluefield. There's actually a pretty good horse, the horse that's running by her here in the stretch, but she also faced that horse two starts back. Gave her a real fight on the lead there. I thought that was a good performance. Majestic Return, the six, projected to be the pace setter in here. Ran well, I thought, first start of this current form cycle against open first level allowance company, showing some speed and then tiring. Not interested in the turf race, two starts back. Again, up and on the pace and the dance in Renee, and might have had to work just a little bit too hard to get to the front while finishing ahead of a couple of these. Yeah, she's a fast horse, and she's got a top race in her that would give her a real chance in this race, I think. I just wonder if she can get the right trip in here with the other speeds. And it's, I mean, you have to notice that they've run her twice now in stakes races, these New York bred stakes races. And to me, she just didn't run well in either of those races. So it, it sort of it suggests that maybe she's not quite this kind of a horse. Lee Lu, the seven, was good enough to finish fourth in a graded stake at Churchill. Two starts back, dropped back in with New York Reds and the dancer Renee. And let's watch that performance where she finished ahead of three of these. She's down inside in behind horses. I really thought Joel Rosario could have gotten out into the clear a little bit earlier on the turn. He stayed covered up until inside the three sixteens. Now he's out with a chance, but it looks like just when he gets into the clear, the horse to beat can't hurry love spurted away. Yeah, the trip, it wasn't a great one in here, Dan, but she does run pretty well to be second best. She also has the benefit. Can Hurry Love, who was initially entered in this race last week, has not re-entered. So that helps Lee Lu in here. We've already talked about the post position and the running style and all that stuff. To me, she's just way the horse to be. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Union Avenue. We're both going to go with Lee Lu in here. This outside post gives the jock plenty of options. I think she'll sit a tracking trip while in the clear. And if she runs her usual race, she'll be tough. I also think the one is a horse you might want to bear watching, at least in some multiple race wagers, is sort of a B play with Lee Lu for me taking most of the money. Yeah, I like Lee Lu quite a bit in this race, the way it was redrawn. And I have her on top, and I just have the two three-year-olds uh, would be the other horses for me, the one and the four. Uh, same triple in here for Mike and I, seven, one, and four in our Friday feature at Saratoga. Good luck.